uh, to where I was going. But back to what I was saying, um, certain of, of these legumes also, and you need to consume this stuff raw. Um, that's going to give you the, uh, uh, the maximum benefit if you're an individual that cannot get out into the sun. Um, now, there are certain things that you're going to need, like vitamin B6 and vitamin C and folic acid, along with magnesium, in order to help you metabolize the tryptophan. But um, tryptophan is one of these uh, essential amino acids that the body needs. And the reason I'm saying you need to eat these things raw it's because if you heat them or cook them, they get denatured by heat. You damage them and you kind of destroy the whole effect of what you were trying to do by heating these things up. Um, now, if anybody that's anxious or depressed, these individuals need more of this serotonin, okay? Now, once the serotonin gets to your brain, it is almost always converted, um, not serotonin, I'm sorry, once this tryptophan that you eat in the form of these foods I just gave you, once it um, gets to your brain, tryptophan almost always becomes serotonin, which is another one of the great things that gets released um, by your body just by you being out in the sun. Now, the thing is, the serotonin is going to help, and I guess people are like, what in the blazes does any of this have to do with spirituality? It all has to do with spirituality. Everything I say to people, has to do with everywhere I'm trying to take you. I give people a foundation, then I put a layer on top of that, and then a layer on top of that, and a layer on top of that. That's why I said, don't try to come in here today and catch me in the middle and think you can keep up, unless you're already highly advanced. And I'm not saying that you aren't, but to know what I'm trying to say to you, you need to know everything I'm saying, okay? Now, <clears throat> there's this little thing called the pineal. That little puppy is way more important than most people ever, ever realized. Now, it has to do with um, your capacity to know the difference between uh, day and night, um, to sleep well, um, to um, be able to move in and out of the, the seasons. And when it synchronizes properly with the pituitary, that is the opening of the psychic eye. See, everybody thinks it's just the pineal. It's not just the pineal, but the pineal is really important. And I'm going to tell you a couple of little things about this little puppy that you really have to know. The pineal... Well, actually, did I finish giving you guys the thing on melatonin? No, I guess I didn't. I, I, I need to give you the pineal before I give you the thing on the melatonin. The pineal is a little bitty thing about the size of a grain of rice. And <clears throat> it is shaped like a pine cone. That's why they call it a pineal. And pine scent is something, and I'm not talking about pine salt, so don't get me wrong here, is something that uh, helps to, 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 I don't want to use the word relax it, but it helps to get it going. But the pineal is very sensitive to light. One of the reasons why you need to be out in the sunlight or get a certain amount of sunlight. Even if you're getting it through the window, that's fine. But I'm saying if you can get it, Directly, and at the crack of dawn, that's better. But the pineal produces melatonin, and melatonin is a hormone that makes you sleep. Now, you know, well, maybe you don't know. As I said before, melanin-rich people are multidimensional. And a lot of your astral work is done when you are in this so-called sleep state. Now, this is also one of the reasons why our people don't age as much as other people do, why people that are heavily rich in melanin, their skin don't really, doesn't really crack. You know how they always say, oh, if you, you know, black don't crack, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, it, it has a tendency to um, extend your youthful um, appearance. 
Now, the, the pineal is the closest thing to a third eye because it is made of the same stuff that makes your other two eyes, okay? And it doesn't seem like much because it's such a little thing. But this little puppy is real deep. Have you guys ever heard anyone talking about the Ark of the Covenant? Now, people need to comprehend this stuff that I'm talking about in order to follow where I'm trying to take you, because all of this is a part of the spirituality, and I know it sounds like, what, what time is it? Okay, I've got to keep track of the time, because I'm on my daylight minutes, seriously. At 9 o'clock, I've got to get off the phone and call right back to get off these minutes, because I'm running short on minutes. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, I did some additional research on it, and it was something, I was talking to one of my brothers in Georgia today, and he was like, you know, Yafa, what is, we, we were talking about patriarchy and pa uh, payer or father plus arc. And I'm like, he said, Yafa, what is arc and electricity? And I said, you know, based on what I know off the top of my head, and, you know, you don't want to quote me on something scientific off the top of my head because of my whole thing with my memory, um, is it has to do with the, tra uh, the path that, that a particular thing travels is what I knew off the top of my head. I said, but, let, you know, to, to be on the safe side, let me look it up. And when I looked it up, I was like, oh, damn, bingo, the Ark of the Covenant. There it is right there. See, this so-called cursed, damnable Bible, that's why it is holy, because the word holy means cursed and damnable. That's why this book is cursed and damnable. They took the scrolls from Melanin Rich People, and you guys might want to look into Walter Williams. He exposes all of that about the Council of Nicaea and how they stole everything. Um, and they re they took stuff out, put stuff in, and by the time they were done, this book is a damn mess, seriously. But I comprehend why they did it. Now, check out the definition of, well, no, before I give you guys that, let me finish giving you what, what, what you need to know about the pioneer, and then I'll connect the dots. Because like I said, I can connect the dots and paint the picture for you. And I have to lay all of this foundation before I start telling people about telepathy and astral projection and seeing auras. I am not going to take this out of context so you don't get spooked out. I am demystifying and taking the spookism out of science, all right, because so it's just science. The pineal is, if you can imagine, and this is for people that are visual, if you were to divide the, your face in half, right, if you drew a line right down the middle where your nose and your, between your eyeballs where you cut your nose in half, which is dead center, your face. And if you were to run a line across that that is approximately the level of your eyes, which is sitting just at the top of the, the nose, the top of the bridge of your nose, and you make that a plus sign, and then you take that and move that back about as far as your ears go to where the front of your ears, right where your ears begin, at the back of your cheek, front of your ears, that far back in your head, approximately eye level, dead center your face, which is going to be right in the, probably dead center your face. It'll be above the roof, roughly above the roof of your mouth is about where the pineal sits. Now, the pituitary gland sits similar in that vicinity also, but it is a little bit further forward, not much, but a little bit further forward and lower down than the pineal. The pineal would be more in line with the crown chakra. Now, it is, although it is what people consider a part of your brain, it is a part of your brain and not. It is not enclosed in the brain in such a fashion that the blood-brain barrier is protecting it. It's not included in the brain to the point that it is protected by the blood-brain barrier. However, it has its own little temple. It is sitting in its own private little cave. Now, it's in a little groove 
and it's between the two thalamus, uh, thalamic bodies of your brain. And it's a part of the epithalamus, okay? It's not isolated from the rest of the body, though, like I said, the way your brain is, because your brain has this barrier around it where shit can't really get to it unless it comes into it through the bloodstream. But people used to think it was just one uh, 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 thing, but it does have its, it has a left and right hemisphere, contrary, even though it's so damn small. And in children, it is larger than it is in adults. Okay? Now, the melatonin is produced by the pineal, okay? And it is, unless I'm mistaken, I don't want to get this mixed up because sometimes I get things a little mixed up. It might be the serotonin, then again, it might be the melatonin. But one of these things is a neurotransmitter, okay? And it's important that I get it real clear for you guys which one of those it is. Now, some people are already past me because you're already scientific and this and that and the other, so you already know, and that's great. But I need to make sure that I am clear on this so I don't misquote it. I, I really don't want to screw this up. Let me see here. Bear with me one second. Hmm. Okay, melatonin, melatonin. Okay, melatonin. Okay, melatonin is made from serotonin, which you get during the day being out in the sun. And serotonin is a neurotransmitter. All right. Now, I got to make sure that I'm not misquoting you here because. You know, this is really important that you guys keep up with where I'm going with this. And I know it's like, where the blazes is she going? Trust me when I tell you, I am going somewhere. Now, melatonin is a hormone that is produced in the, or by the pineal, okay? And it decreases the aging process. And the melatonin is one of the things that makes you dark also. And it also, the melatonin, helps create vivid, very vivid dreams. That's why a lot of these people that go out and, and people, okay, I think my alarm is going off. Uh, please, melanin rich people, do not go out and buy melatonin tablets and take that crap. You don't need it. You already are it. Not to mention the fact that that stuff is stuff that they get from melanin-rich melanin cadavers. Now, unless you're melanin-rich and you want to start in on that cannibalism, then fine. But I'm going to say to you, do not dare go out and buy and consume melatonin tablets, melatonin tea, or any of this other stuff that they're stealing from what you guys call black people. While we were asleep, they should have got their own damn melanin, okay? I'm, I'm not, I, I can't stress that enough. Now, for people that didn't get involved with so-called white folks, and oh, I would never deal with so-called, whatever, fine. There are a lot of people that were getting involved with them for whatever reason. Reason. When we were unconscious and asleep, and oh, my God, man, that Britney Spears, damn, she sure is fine. And, Oh, oh, man, did you see Justin Timberlake? He sure is cute. While we were on that stuff, they should have been trying to get it because we were giving it up. They should have got their own, okay? So the fact of the matter is people are thinking, oh, they can do it now. I think they've missed that boat. Personally, I think that ship has sailed. I don't think they have enough generations to get it, personally. However, because we're going into a, a time where if you didn't get it when you were supposed to get it, or if you didn't want it, you were supposed to do spiritual work. If you didn't do your spiritual work, then you screwed up and you missed the boat, and that's just too bad, and that's just all. But melanin rich people do not go and take that stuff that they are stealing from dead people, which is one of the reasons why they're closing up so many hospitals in melanin rich communities, and especially in Southern California. I'm just going to speak for Southern California.